I've had this car for about a month. It's a 997911, and I thought I'd go ahead and give my first impressions. So this is the key. This was the this was the addition before they started making the keys look like the car, which is kind of a trope. So I don't mind it. When you open a door, it cracks the windows. At first, I thought that was kind of a silly thing. <clears throat> But after doing a little bit of research, it actually doesn't seem to be that rare of a feature on cars that don't have a frame on the window right there. So that's why it does that. But even on the inside, look. One of the things that sucks about living in Okinawa is this car's been parked for two days and I tried to put it in reverse and there was some resistance. And it broke loose. What is that? The hubs rusted a little bit in two days and i'm moving closer to the ocean so so this is a 2010 911 carrera carrera s There's bugs everywhere right so this is a 2010 911 carrera s it has 385 horsepower and it weighs 3100 pounds which surprised me because that's actually less than an alteza or an is 300. Zero to, zero to 60 is 3.8 seconds which makes it the fastest car i've ever had including the 486 horsepower alteza I was actually looking for Caymans because I wanted to try out the PDK and transmission. Then I started thinking, oh, the yen rate's really good and I have two kids, so what are 911s selling for? And I ended up in a PDK 911. Admittedly, if I was looking for a 911 from the start, I probably would have got a manual because that's how you buy 911s. And honestly, I wish I had. We'll start with things I don't like about the car. One, not a big fan of transmission. We'll get into that in a second. Two, it f drives heavier than it is. So typically you hear people talking about how a car like the R35 GTR drives lighter than it is. The R35 is extremely heavy. This car, I was I looked up how, weigh, how much it weighed after I bought it and after I drove it, and I was shocked. It's 200 pounds lighter than an Altesa. This does not feel that light. This is a heavy, this, this car drives heavy. I suspect that's because the tires are so big. So maybe that'll be a good thing at speed which would make sense it's a german car they're probably built for the autobahn the interior is not as nice as i would expect it to be it still kind of has it's, it feels really dated for being a 2010. now maybe i'm just maybe i'm just old and i feel like a 2010 is not that long ago but when i think of a 2010 porsche i, I, I would expect some alcantara you know it's got an alcantara roof admittedly but that's that's it the stock infotainment system is quite bad on this car it has an sd card to put in like it's there's some real dated stuff going on there admittedly porsche does have like a uh, refresh available for it but it's not cheap and honestly i quite like having a massive tablet in there anyway to cover all the dated buttons and everything though it does make the usability of it hard and it blocks some of the vents I don't particularly find the car to be all that engaging, and it doesn't sound as good as I thought it would. It does have an aftermarket exhaust, thank God, because the stock exhaust sounds like a Camry. It has a lot of weird, like, things about it that I just think are unnecessary. Like, so far, I don't see a way to turn off the headlights. I wonder if that's a normal thing, because the previous owner actually installed a headlight kill switch. There's an aftermarket button that I can press to turn off the headlights, which is great, because I'm in the military, and you have to turn off the headlights when you come into the base at night. Right there. Oh, the other thing that's kind of weird, the, the mirrors fold in, but they're manual, and I mean, even my 97 van has electronic mirrors, and not only are they manual, but there's a latch. There's like a lever that comes out, and it locks them, so it took me forever to figure out how to actually pull the mirrors out when I picked the car up. Also, there's no dipstick. This thing has, if you want to check the oil on it, you have to use the dashboard and it'll tell you what the, what the oil level is, which is cool, I guess. But how do I check the quality of the oil? Do I just have to follow their service recommendations? But that's ridiculous because depending on how you drive the car, you're going to need to change oil more quickly. And certainly for a track focus car, you should be able to check the quality of your oil. This one is a Carrera S, which means it's two wheel drive and it is the narrow body which is crazy to me because the car feels really wide already. The steering wheel on this, crazy thick, doesn't make any sense. And it's got these like these nubs for gripping, right? But they're not really very useful. My hands are big enough to palm a basketball. 
I can't put my I can't put the whole steering wheel in my hands, and the nub the 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 grips on the steering wheel are at ten and two, but the paddles are at nine and three, which is where your hands are going to be anyway if you're driving aggressively. So, what's the point? I've heard people other other people on the internet talk about this steering wheel like it's a good thing, how thick it is. I don't get that. No, this is, it's too thick. The back seats famously bad. Rear facing child seats not possible. Front facing seats can be done if you move the seat up. One interesting thing about child seats is as your child gets older you actually gain space because the rear facing seat when they're an infant takes up the most space then you switch to a front facing seat and you get a little bit more space back and then when they get a little bit older you put them in a booster seat then you have all kinds of space. So my oldest is actually going to be in a booster seat soon so hopefully I'll be able to take her for rides in this car. She certainly seems interested in it. I will say though it seems like Porsche knows that the back seats are useless because they're designed to fold down and actually makes a very nice shelf. So probably what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a milk crate back there and tie it down with bungee cords. And because they fold down, you have the seat itself and then you have the shelf on top. It's actually a lot of space for stuff, just not people. And all the like raging reviews of this transmission, which is a big reason why I actually sought this car out, is they talk about how lightning fast it shifts and how, you know, it's just, it's, it's just the best dual clutch on the market. We all understand that dual clutch is the way to go for performance, and this one is supposed to be the best one, the PDK. Honestly, maybe because it's the first gen, I don't enjoy it. There's a, there's a significant delay in the shift, which I know got better with the later cars, but that doesn't make this one any better. These transmissions ha are n known to have catastrophic electronic failure, and that would re re result in a brand new transmission from Porsche, which has a price tag of fifteen to $25,000. Now, these days there's people who have figured out how to work on these and replace these parts, but it's not easy, and Porsche does not make it easy. They're... The, I have a lot of questions as to why they would do it that way, but um, it is what it is. If you can find a shop who's willing to take some risk, and if you're willing to take some risk, maybe you can recover a bricked PDK, but generally speaking, it is a $20,000 bill. So, the previous owner installed the stereo system, and in typical Japanese fashion, it doesn't seem to be the best wiring job. Another thing I'm not a big fan of is the color. It's Carrera white, which is a nice white as whites go, but honestly, I would have loved to have it in a red or a blue, or just something more interesting. And most people who buy these cars brand new tend to be older, and so it makes sense that a lot of silvers and whites get sold. I personally, I think white only looks good if you have white wheels. As far as things that I like about the car, uh, well, it's fast, so there's that, and I'm sure it's gonna drive well. And I find the rear engine dynamics to be interesting, and I'm looking forward to exploring that more. I haven't historically been a big fan of Porsches in general, and when I googled the interiors, I was always a little disappointed. And the 997 was no exception. Until I got inside Josh's 964, which looks ugly in the inside. I didn't like the way they looked at all. But once I got inside, I was shocked. The materials were so nice. Everything just felt really good. And there's an emotion that kind of... There was, there was, I had a much stronger emotional reaction to that car than I thought I would. And certainly more so than you could experience looking at pictures on the internet. And that holds true with this car as well. I actually avoided the 996, most, yes, because of the engine issues, but also because the interior didn't seem to have that same spirit. This one does. Yes, it's barren and simple. It feels like a driver's car. But the quality, the quality of the materials are luxury, with the exception of the center console, which clearly looks like it was a bit of a cost-saving endeavor. Or maybe they expected people to get the leather option. I don't know if it's gets wrapped with leather, but this plastic has like this covering on it uh, of some kind. Maybe felt kind of like fake leather, but it, clearly it didn't hold up over time. It's scratched, horribly scratched. For a car that only has about 40,000 miles, I am shocked at how bad of condition this center console is in. And it's not just like a key wear point on a center console. It's the whole thing, including the, uh, the little cup holder or the little cubby back there in front of the back seats which I doubt got that much use. That being said everything else it seems to be in really good condition so it's kind of odd. I like that it has launch control. Being that there's not a whole lot of tracks available in Okinawa most of the fun available is either on the very small mountain roads they have here or um, just gunning it from a stoplight and this does that very very well um, so that's a lot of fun. 
for all the hate I'm giving the transmission, it's enjoyable, particularly from a dig. Would I buy one again? Probably not. It doesn't sound as good as I expected, but I do like that it makes a lot of noise. As much as I love the S660, one of the things that really kind of took away from the driving experience, certainly here where I don't have a lot of toge, uh, was how quiet it was. Tunnels weren't fun anymore. That's a tragedy. And this car, tunnel fun is back. It's got like, it's got a roof rack um, things built in to the, to the roof, which is really nice. You can tell that this car was designed to be a daily driver. Maybe a daily driver for someone with more money than me, but a daily driver nonetheless. There's plenty of practicality for it. The back seats are great for storage, and the front is actually really spacious with some built-in shelves. Let's have a look at that. Hydraulic braces, which is nice. There's so much, where's my light? Look at that. That is a lot of space. And then check this out. This is really cool. It's got, they've, they've, dis, they've managed to make this space work as a shelf. Admittedly with cheap plastic things, but it, it works. It gets the job done. Oh. And dot four brake, dot four from factory. Nice. This is the kind of stuff. I don't know what this is. My previous, the previous owner installed this. I don't know what that is. I think the cup holder situation is actually pretty smart. Rather than having these big cups, they pop out, which I think is quite clever, actually. Glove box feels really heavy and durable. Got the ET. So this is a Japanese toll card reader that's built in, which I think is nice. And the material inside the glove box is actually really, really nice too. All throughout the car, everything just feels heavy and quality, which is exactly what I loved about my, my, about my friend's 964. And it definitely carries over in here. I really like these LED running lights, which the 0.2 has, but the 0.1 does not. So Kolki versus Zinke, basically. Uh, these engines don't have the IMS bearing issues that the, pre that the earlier 997s and 996s had. Uh, and they also had, came with direct fuel injection, so they make a little bit more power and a, bit, and a better you know, fuel economy. I will say though that the fuel economy in this car is not as good as I expected. If I daily this, it's $400 a month. The engine bay feels really tiny, honestly, and there's really not a lot of room for anything going on in here. Let me crank this up. It's just, it's very crowded, which honestly you would expect of a car like this, but I find the, the size of the hood, the cover, to be comically small. It's just kind of funny. I don't have an issue with it. It's just that it was just, it's just weird. I'm used to a huge cavernous hood. This does not have that. This is a vented hood, see, right? And one, one thing that's interesting about it is it actually, instead of just letting heat dissipate, it actually uses a fan to blow heat out. The Point 2 has the LED taillights. Uh, I actually don't like that quite so much as the regular ones. And honestly, the Point 1 sounds better than a Point 2, but the Point 2 is more reliable, so. When the car comes up to speed, this actually will pop up, and I can do it manually, I'll do that here. So I turned the car off, and it's still up. I don't know how to make it go down. And when I hit the button to turn it off, because you can actively turn it up like I did, I hit the button again and it doesn't go down. But it obviously goes down on its own later. I just don't know how to make it go down. It's like some weird form of car erectile dysfunction. Wait, it's the opposite. So those are my first impressions of the car. Overall, I actually really like this car. I think it's really enjoyable. I love the way the doors close. I love the way it feels. I love Everything just feels heavy and quality and just really good. I want to keep this car for a long time, but with my experience with it so far, I don't see myself keeping this for very long. We'll see. Maybe it'll win me over. Surely there's some reason why everyone loves these.